Hey, what's up? Welcome to a new quick edit video, this time with an image from the Treizen in the Italian Dolomites. This image will not only be a panoramic image, but also I'm going to merge an HDR photo right here. For this shot, I plan to make it a lot warmer and have some nice contrast throughout this image and maybe also apply some motion blur to the clouds. And for all of this, I will be using Adobe Lightroom and some Photoshop as well. So before I start, let's first take a look at the before and after images. Alright, here we are in Adobe Lightroom and you can see I already have merged the HDR panorama. If you don't know how to do this, that's pretty simple. I'm simply selecting all the bracketed shots for this image like this, then right click on them and go to Photo Merge HDR Panorama. So I ended up with this image and to start the editing I'm going all the way up, change the profile to Adobe Standard which will lessen the contrast a little bit just so I have more control over it myself. For the white balance I want to increase the temperature because as I said I want this image to be nice and warm. And let's also add some tint. Okay, as you can see this image is a little bit overexposed, so let's drop the highlights first. Okay, now this area will be hard to fix and I actually don't care for overexposure in there. In the end I want to apply some heavy glow effect over this area, so it's actually looking nicer with some overexposure left right there. Then let's also increase the shadows. And this will reveal some more details in the darker spots. And I could even slightly increase the blacks. Now of course the image starts to lose some contrast, so let's fix that. Okay. And finally I want to add a lot of vibrance, since I want this image to be saturated. And then I'm dropping the saturation a little bit, because I think it's just looking much better this way. Alright. Then let's do some local adjustments. I'm starting by using the gradiated filters first. As you can see I have applied one over the foreground. And here I just want to slightly darken it by dropping the exposure. Okay, and I'm doing the same thing for the top. Just slightly drop the exposure. Okay. Then I already want to apply some subtle glow around the bright area in the sky. And of course I'm using a radial filter for this. You can see I have placed it above the sun basically. And inside of this filter I'm increasing the blacks. Alright, that's it for the local adjustments. Then let's do a little bit of color grading. First I want to darken the blue of the sky some more, so I'm dropping the blue tones in the luminance tab. Then let's switch over to the saturation. And right away I want to get rid of the green tones, since I don't think they are fitting for this image. Also I want to drop the yellow tones. And then let's boost orange. And let's also drop the blue tones a little bit. All right. Now for the split toning, as I want to have a warm sunset image, I'm applying a warm color to the highlights, of course. And that looks pretty good. Then for the shadows, I'm applying a colder tone with a little less saturation. Okay. And then let's go all the way down to the calibration tab. And here again I just play around with all those sliders. First I'm dropping the blue primary hue, which will add this nice red tint to those warm colors. And let's boost the saturation some more. And let's increase green and red. And I think that looks much better. Then let's also apply a little vignetting. And finally, let's sharpen the image. That's it for the Lightroom part. Now let's switch over to Photoshop. 
And of course, first I want to fix a few things here. I mainly want to reduce sensor spots and lens flare. So let's grab the spot healing brush and start removing objects. Okay, I think I also want to clean up the foreground a little bit. Alright, nice. Now, due to merging the panoramic image, the image got a little bit distorted, but that shouldn't be a big problem. Let me first duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J, just in case I mess something up. And then I'm creating a new guideline by clicking on this ruler and dragging down this line. So let's place it around here. And now I'm hitting Ctrl T. Right click in the image and then let's choose the warp transformation. And basically now I'm clicking through the image and adjusting the height of the horizon. And this way I can hopefully fix the distortion. I could even make the Trizin a little bigger. Just so they look a little more impressing. Alright, and you can see this is a pretty major difference. Then next, let's apply the glow effect. So I'm creating a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool, set the opacity to around 10% and with the brush tool selected and holding down alt key I'm clicking in this area to pick up this color tone and then with a soft brush I'm just starting to paint in some glow and as I said before I'm adding some overexposure right there because I think it looks better than bright clouds then let's merge every layer right here by selecting them and hitting Ctrl E and then it's time for the Nick collection and first off I think I want this image to be warmer so let's go with the brilliance warm filter and just increase the warmth okay and then let's head to the Nick collection one more time and this time I'm choosing the polarization effect this will just help Add some nicer contrast throughout the image by increasing the strength. Okay. Okay, and that's pretty much it for editing this mountainscape photo. Now there's one more thing I could do and that's to clean up the image a little bit by adding some motion blur to those clouds. For this I'm pressing W to select the quick selection tool and then just brush over the sky. Just like this, it doesn't need to be that exact. Then I'm copying this selection by hitting Ctrl C and just pass it. And with this new layer, I'm holding down the Ctrl key and click on the thumbnail. And then go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Just add a little bit of Motion Blur right there. And you can see this cleans up the image a little bit and gives it a really cool effect in my opinion. Now here's a little error from the motion blur, that's not a big deal though. Just apply a layer mask, grab the brush tool, set the foreground color to black and then mask out this area. And that's it. Okay, so I hope this video was interesting and helpful. Of course, if you have any questions about the editing then please let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.